Hi, Mystery Recapped here. Today, I'm going to explain a Spanish mystery thriller film called Mirage. Spoilers ahead, watch out, and take care. In 1989, during the fall of the Berlin Wall, a violent storm passes through Western Europe, causing frequent electrical disturbances. Though the condition is very severe, a boy from Spain named Nico Lasarte seems to be enjoying it. He is recording himself playing various tunes on his guitar, but just then, he hears some screams. On peeking through the window, Nico notices his neighbor, Angel Prieto, fighting with his wife. Scared that something bad might happen, he slowly makes his way towards their home and sneaks in through the back door. When he reaches the living room, he finds Angel's wife lying dead on the floor. This traumatizes the little boy, and he starts screaming at the top of his lungs. Unfortunately, Angel arrives there with a knife, seemingly to kill him. Terrified, Nico runs out of the house, but before he can call for help, a car strikes him. The next day, Angel is apprehended by the police on grounds of murder, while Nico is pronounced dead in the hospital. Following this, the movie skips to the year 2014, where a similar storm is passing through Europe. A couple, Vera Roy and David Ortiz, has just moved into Nico's house after getting it refurbished. They have a two-year-old daughter named Gloria. Vera is a nurse by profession, while David is a banker. The latter is often away on business trips, but he appears to love his family a lot. One evening, while the couple is clearing out the storeroom, they come across Nico's old television set and camera. They also find a collection of tapes which piques their curiosity. So, David assembles the vintage devices and finds out that they still work. Most of the tapes are Nico practicing his guitar and enjoying time with his mom. But right then, something strange happens. The TV starts broadcasting live about the fall of the Berlin Wall. This is the same news that Nico and his mom watched in 1989. The following day, the couple invites their neighbors, Ator and his mom, Clara, for dinner. Vera explains that their television unexpectedly broadcasted some news from 1989, but of course, no one believes her. To change the topic, David talks about the boy in the videotapes, and Ator immediately recognizes him. He reveals that the boy was his best friend, Nico, who died in the year 1989. Ator then starts explaining the entire story about how Nico discovered his neighbor committing a murder and how he was killed while trying to flee. For some reason, Clara is pretty anxious throughout the story. It is obvious that she is hiding something. After the guests are gone, David conducts some research on Nico. Through an article, he finds out that Angel committed the unthinkable only three months into his sentence. However, before he died, he confessed that he was going to bury his wife's remains inside his workshop. That night, the weather gets even worse, and it starts thundering. Vera, who is sleeping peacefully, is suddenly awakened by a noise coming from the living room. Scared, she slowly proceeds there, only to find the old television showing the same news from 1989. Vera tries to turn it off, but at the same time, Nico appears with his guitar. This is the exact moment he was trying to record himself as shown in the first scene. At this point, Vera can't really comprehend what's happening. She tries walking away to call her husband, but just then, Nico, from the other end of the television, notices her. He is equally shocked to see someone inside his video camera. Nonetheless, he says hello and asks Vera if she can hear him. The latter, in a scared tone, says yes, and with this, they start talking. Do you like my guitar playing, says Nico? No, says Vera. At first, Vera tries to make him understand that she's from the year 2014, but he thinks she's joking. Suddenly, Nico hears his neighbor, Mr. Angel, quarreling with his wife. Vera, having heard the entire story from Ator, knows that something bad is about to happen. So, she pleads with Nico to not leave the house. She even reveals that he will die if he chooses to enter Mr. Angel's home. Despite the warnings, Nico leaves his house and eventually finds out about the murder. However, since Vera delayed him for a while, he doesn't get hit by the car, and hence, his life is saved. Now he can go on to lead a tortured life of failing in the music industry. On the other hand, a confused Vera decides to forget everything and just go to sleep. She hopes that everything she witnessed was merely a nightmare. But little did she know that the strange encounter with Nico was only the beginning of something brutal. The next morning, surprisingly, she wakes up in her hospital with no recollection of how she got there. Just then, one of her colleagues approaches her and says, we 
are waiting for you. Thinking that she simply dozed off due to fatigue, Vera heads to the operation theater only to learn that something has changed. For some reason, the main doctor keeps acting like a nurse, and all the staff in the room address Vera as a doctor. The latter tries to assert that she is simply a nurse, but everyone thinks she is joking. This makes Vera assume that she is hallucinating, so she storms out of the room to calm herself down. Shortly after, she reaches her daughter Gloria's school to pick her up. However, all the students claim that they don't have a friend by that name. Scared, she rushes to her husband David's office and tries explaining about their daughter's disappearance. But surprisingly, even he doesn't recognize her. Left with no other options, she heads to the police station and asks for help. A young officer takes her case and asks her several questions. Vera explains everything that has led to this day, including the strange TV. As expected, the officer is not convinced by her answers, and he starts doubting her sanity. He even checks Vera's records and reveals that she isn't married, and that she has no daughter. And instead of helping, he refers her to get an immediate medical checkup. Later, Vera heads to the same hospital where she works and takes an MRI scan. Fortunately, the results are normal, which indicates that her brain is functioning properly. After the checkups, she heads to her office and finds several certificates and trophies, all of which have the words Dr. Vera Roy inscribed on them. This is when Vera realizes that something awfully bad has happened. She doesn't have to look after her kids anymore. A lot of parents would sign up for this fate in a heartbeat. Wasting no time, she heads to her home and barges in through the back door. To her horror, the entire house looks different. Vera nervously searches the name Nico Lasarte on the internet. Lo and behold, she finds out that a writer has published a book in which Nico is the protagonist. The book is apparently about time travel. Vera tries learning more about it, but just then, a woman approaches her from behind. She reveals that she is the owner of the house. A little while later, her husband also arrives, who is none other than David himself. Vera is shocked to learn that the love of her life is actually married to a different woman. Suddenly, the cops arrive outside, so Vera is forced to make a run for it. The commotion also attracts some neighbors, including the murderer from 1989, Angel. He has not been apprehended in this timeline, and his new wife is revealed to be Ator's mom, Clara. Meanwhile, back in 1989, Nico is equally confused, because he met a woman from the future. Hoping to talk to her again, he sits the whole day next to the video recorder, but nothing happens. Hence, that evening, he gets up and slowly proceeds towards Angel's house to check if everything was just a dream. Unfortunately, it isn't, as he finds the woman's dead body inside the bathtub. After a while, Nico starts looking for clues inside the house. He eventually comes across a passport, which has the name of the deceased woman, but the picture of Clara. This finally makes him realize that Angel and Clara are in a relationship. Now, she is planning to use his deceased wife's identity and fly to another country. If she succeeds, the murder case will never come to light. However, little Nico doesn't want that to happen. He prepares to leave with the passport, but just then, Angel arrives. Nico quickly hides under the bed, and from it, there is a bathtub clearly visible. Hence, he has to reluctantly watch Angel dissect his wife, bit by bit. After a while, the murderer gets a call from someone, and using this as an opportunity, Nico escapes the house. Back in the present, Vera meets her neighbor and longtime friend Ator, and asks him for help. As expected, he doesn't recognize her, so Vera starts explaining about some of his personal details. She also reveals how they met. It was the year 2011, and they came across each other inside a metro. For weeks, they met regularly and became good friends. The friendship soon turned into a relationship, but one day, Ator introduced her to one of his friends, David. Vera was instantly smitten by him, and she knew he was the one. Subsequently, the two started dating and also got married. Hearing this, Ator starts laughing, as he still doesn't believe that any of it happened. Oh, so you cucked me, did you? He simply calls her a lunatic before heading off to work. In the next scene, the officer tracks down Vera and tries to take her to the hospital, but to no avail. Instead, she wants clues on the location of Nico Lasarte. The officer immediately recognizes the name as he had read the book about him. So, to know more, they decide to visit the writer. The same day, the two approach the writer and ask her about the book. The woman reveals that she just printed the book, and the entire idea was given by Nico's mom. When asked if she has met the boy himself, the writer says no. Meanwhile, Vera explains that she is the time traveler Nico was talking about. They met during the deadly storm, when both of their timelines intertwined. However, the writer thinks that she's joking and refuses to provide any more information. Because of this, Vera pleads with the officer to retrieve Nico's location from the police database. 
The latter replies that it is not possible unless she has a strong reason for doing so. Vera thinks for a while and suddenly remembers how Angel was planning to bury his deceased wife inside his workshop. She relays the information to the officer and with this, a search operation commences. Surprisingly, her information turns out to be true and the skeletal remains of someone are retrieved from there. This somewhat convinces the officer that Vera is indeed telling the truth. Hence, he hands her a piece of paper with Nico Lasarte's address and bids her farewell. Later, Vera reaches the set address, which turns out to be a hotel. Inside, she does not find Nico, but instead comes across David, who is having a romantic time with a woman. Ooh, David. <laughs> he is cheating on his wife from this timeline. Vera is devastated, as this means that David was cheating on her in the real timeline, too. She once had found a matchstick on him, which belongs to this hotel. Ah, once a David, always a David. You know what I'm saying? Keeping all her emotions aside, Vera decides to take action. Since David is a banker, he probably has details on a lot of people, including Nico. Hence, she blackmails him into finding the information, or else she will expose him to his wife, just like he exposed himself to his lover. <laughs> Reluctantly, David complies, and he finally tracks down Nico Lasarte. On the other hand, after the skeletal remains are found, Angel and his new wife Clara are arrested. They are brought to the interrogation room where the same officer arrives to ask them questions. Following this, the movie flashes back to the year 1989, on the night where it all transpired. Angel is seen getting intimate with Clara when his current wife walks in on him. Enraged, the latter grabs a knife and starts swinging it at the two. She is close to killing Clara, but unfortunately, Angel intervenes and the knife accidentally goes through her own stomach. She is then thrown down the stairs, effectively ending her life. Back in the present, the officer asks Angel why he killed his ex-wife, but he gets no answer. This is when he reveals something shocking. He explains that right after the incident, Nico went to the police station and reported everything. However, the records showed something different. Angel's wife was actually in Paris, and her flight details were also verified by the authorities. As a result, Nico was declared as a lunatic, and his mother had to take him away from the city. From that day onwards, the boy spent the rest of his life in confusion. But he knew that after some years, he would eventually meet the woman from the future. So, Nico waited and waited. We are then shown a time lapse of him growing up. Real happy 80s stuff. 22 years pass by, and an adult Nico is finally revealed to be none other than the officer. One day, he finally saw her inside a metro and approached her. Meanwhile, Vera goes to Nico's address and finally finds him. She is shocked to learn that he is the same officer she has been in contact with. At this point, the storm has again resurfaced. Nico reveals that he wanted to tell her everything, but couldn't, as her mind was already confused and fragile. So, bit by bit, he gave her clues, which finally led her to him. Nico then explains that after he approached her at the metro station, they became good friends. Then they got close to one another and eventually started dating. At last, they also got married and started living a happy life. I guess she did like his child guitar playing after all. Nico always wanted to ask her about that stormy night when they met, but he didn't want to jeopardize their relationship. Hence, he concealed the truth to himself. Hearing all this, Vera is brought to tears, but she still does not want to live in this timeline. She is ready to do anything to meet her daughter again. Following this, we finally get to know how the timelines were altered. In the original 2014 timeline, when Vera saw 1989 Nico and saved him from his impending death, it started a chain reaction. Since Nico never died, he became obsessed with finding the time traveler. After 22 long years, he finally met her and started a romantic affair with her. Because of this, Vera never met Ator or his friend David. This means that she never got married or had a daughter. As everything flashed, is right before her eyes. Vera begs Nico to help her get to his timeline, but the latter doesn't want to let her go. So, with no options left, she commits the unthinkable. Now, to bring her back, Nico is forced to take action. Wasting no time, he breaks into his former house and brings out the television and video camera. As the storm continues brewing, Nico connects the device and finds his 1989 self on the other end. He then tells the boy everything and asks for his help. In the next scene, Vera wakes up in her house, disoriented and confused. However, when she turns out, she is relieved to find David beside her. She then rushes to the other room and finally reunites with her daughter. It turns out Nico sorted everything out in the other timeline. He knew that the love of his life would never return, but the most important thing to him was her happiness. The movie ends as Vera again discloses the location where Angel hid his ex-wife's remains. As the police check the area, Vera comes across Nico. Surprisingly, he doesn't recognize her anymore. 
Hey guys, Adam here. I just wanted to say that this is script number 500, which is a huge milestone. So I wanted to thank everybody that's been with me since the beginning and that is still listening to Mystery. Everyone here at the team really appreciates it. Anyway, Happy New Year.